Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today it's unboxing day. I've got three new Les Pauls for us. I've got a couple of other fenders that I think we'll just do the unboxing and review with. So let's go ahead and start with this big old package here. This is a guitar that I had found on Reverb and it just happened to be a fan of the show. He was really happy that I wanted to buy it because I was the whole reason why he had initially bought it. But this is a really hot guitar right now and it kind of ties in with a limited edition signature model that's really close to coming out. I think we'll see it within the next week or two. But a little bit more on that here in a minute. So this seller definitely cared for his guitar. Right off the bat, Gen 2 chainsaw case. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, I hate it when this happens. So if somebody has a particularly sweaty hand, the nice padding starts to deteriorate. So when that happens, what I suggest you do is just take some black electrical tape and wrap it. That way it's still soft and it doesn't continue to deteriorate because all that's under there is like a little metal bracket. Now what might be an even better thing to use is like a, a baseball bat tape at the end of that. That'd be a little bit more comfortable too. It's just, I have electrical tape because I think it was like 97 cents at Walmart for a pack of three. And there you go. No more disgusting feeling handle and it's still nice and padded. And it only cost us effectively like maybe 15 cents. Awesome. But it looks like we have all three latches. That's the most important thing to me. Let's go ahead and see what is sleeping inside this beautiful Gen 2 chainsaw case. Oh, wow. This is a really dark bordered silver burst. I believe there's a lot of people that like this type of one because it more so reminds them of the one that Adam Jones uses. And of course, Adam Jones, that's the one that we're talking about. That signature is so close to coming out. There's been photos leaked of a limited edition case for them. Adam's been posting photos, Cesar from Gibson's been posting a bunch of photos. They're supposed to come out at the end of October, so we should be seeing those here very soon. And I wanted it because of this dark border. There's a lot of fans that like it. Now, in my personal opinion, I don't like the dark border as much. It looks but... like we get a Seymour Duncan in the bridge, probably a JB or something, and maybe the original. Can't remember, does it have the original pickups? It looks like we got the original output jack. Looks like our switch tip is in here. Some original screws. And yes, we do have the original bridge pickup. I'll probably just leave it as is because it'll make a good comparison piece. It looks like somebody swapped out our speed knobs, but we do have the original pit guard in here and everything. And I'm not quite sure what the other stuff is. So if you can't find one of those signature Adam Jones ones, because they're only making 79 of the age signed and 179 of the VOS, which I think was not enough at all. And they're supposed to be six grand for the VOS and 10 grand for the age sign, but I've already seen people scalping them as much as double that price. So for not much more than the VOS, you can actually get the vintage original. This one has seriously aged, but everything's actually looking really nice on this one. Your neck's in good shape too. But the thing with this one is they told me it's been refretted. But it looks like somebody went ahead and manually put fret nibs on top of it. So even though it's had a modification, it still has the nibs. I'm wondering if that's what that stuff was. Okay, yep, I didn't realize that they had done that. Okay, so in order to retain fret nibs when it comes to refret time, you can pay somebody like 1500 bucks and they will painstakingly take the frets off with hopefully not destroying the fret nibs. That's a fret nib retention refret. It's not 100% guarantee that one or two isn't going to fall off. But what I'm guessing is they just completely replace the entire binding on this one. And that might be what the remnants is of this because that looks like an original fret nib and it's got the channel and everything. So it's kind of cool that they at least kept it. But that makes me curious. Let's check this out under black light real quick. Yeah, it looks like our top's looking good. The back's nice. The neck is nice. Okay, yep, here we can see it. So that is completely replaced binding. And what they did is they do have a little bit of overspray along the edge of the neck to match the color. But as far as brakes, cracks, or repairs, we're definitely okay on that. But that is a good example of what a black light can show you. It looks like they paid some 600 bucks just for some... What? Replace jack, check and clean all electronics. Repair wiring to have pickups working in the correct positions. Gosh, this guy charged $500 just for that? 
Dang, that's not even this. I figured 600 bucks would cover that. That shouldn't have cost any more than like 150, 200 bucks. Well, cool, that's a 1980, very early. So we'll still have the maple neck yet. And before we unbox our next two guitars, let's hear a word from our sponsor today, Skillshare. Skillshare is an ad-free online video learning community for creative people. You can learn things like fine art, there's graphic design, animation, web development. You can even learn electric guitar and ooh, singing made easy. Personally, I'm pretty pumped up to check out some of the videography and photography courses to help improve my own show. It looks like the class by Brandon Wolfel on Instagram worthy photography might be useful to step up my game there too. But anyways, I mean, with all these topics on Skillshare to choose from, it makes learning new marketable skills easy, and that's something that I personally like. Because then you can use that for either self-improvement, you can get yourself a better job, or you can even start your own path down the road to becoming an entrepreneur. So if you're interested in trying Skillshare, by clicking the link in the description, for a limited time, the first 1,000 people will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your own creativity. And after that, a yearly subscription can be as low as $8.25 a month. Now go get creative. All right, next up here, we have a guitar that traveled all the way from Korea. I woke up really early one morning to try to get a video done, and I just happened to catch this thing. And I made them an offer, and I was surprised they accepted it. But then they're like, hey, it's Thanksgiving here. I can't ship this till next week. Okay, so I looked up the holidays to see if that's actually something legitimate or if this is just some sort of a scam because it was a really nice Les Paul. And yeah, it all seemed to check out. So I said, okay, I'm not in that big of a hurry anyways. But then when they shipped it the following week, it only took like two or three days to get here. But I do want to do a little bit of clarification here. I had somebody in my last video when I was talking about uh, EMS not delivering to the USA right now. That's just from Japan. It's Japan's EMS. EMS is still operating from pretty much every other country that I'm aware of. It's just getting things out of Japan has been kind of a pain lately because there's a lot of cool stuff in Japan that I want to bring back home, but I got a whole bunch of guitars I still have to deal with that are just waiting to be reviewed. So this one, I don't think I'll do a separate review and demo because we've already talked about these before. This is the early 90s Les Paul Plus Customs. And I just thought it was a beautiful example. It's got this nice honeyed finish. It's got that dark teardrop shape, but like it's nice and subtle. And you don't really find this particular finish on these guitars that often. It looks like somebody put a brass nut on here. How cool is that? I really love 70s and 80s Gibsons and brass nuts were big back then. So it's always kind of a nice little treat to see a guitar like that. But I mean, take a look at this thing. These 90s Custom Plus tops are fantastic guitars. Not only because they look fantastic, but it's kind of the start of the Goodwood era, which is basically just a fancy way of saying Gibson started to care again because you get the Jeskowitz era. This is when they kind of started figuring out what they can do with this Gibson brand because they were coming out of the dark times of the Norland era when they weren't necessarily making good financial decisions. So say all you want about what Henry J did throughout his whole career. In the early days, he and his advisors and stuff, they really took this company and brought it back to life. That's kind of cool. It's almost got a quiltiness to the back. And all things considered, it's not actually in half bad shape. And it looks like we have some cool keepsakes from South Korea. Not really quite sure what this is. Is it meant to be a bracelet or something for your guitar? <laughs> That's ironic. Handmade in Chicago, Illinois. Somehow ended up in South Korea and now here it is. You know, only about three hours from its hometown. So yeah, this monkey tar shop. It's definitely safe to buy from. They were very good. I will say that their packing wasn't the best. I would never send something internationally in such a flimsy package. But hey, all's well that ends well. And now we just have one left. I'm pretty excited to open this one. It's been a while since I've had one of these. I tend to get the uh, higher end version of this guitar more often than this one. However, in an AB comparison test between the two, I actually found I prefer the lower end one. And it's funny how that works sometimes. But this is also a model we've talked about a lot. However, I think I need to re-review them in my new style with B-roll and stuff. 
Man, I need to start selling some guitars. My packing materials are piling up. This is a mighty large case, you might say. And I would have to say to that, you are very right. It's always around Halloween time when I start to get these and I have like complete sets. Oh, this is nice. Whoa. So this is the Buckethead Studio, right? This thing is like, well, it's looking like it's mint condition. Finding clean examples of these is starting to become difficult, especially as the prices just continue to go up and up and up on these things. I don't think it's 100% necessarily my fault for that. It's just because these are fantastic guitars. Yeah, as far as the face goes, I'm not seeing any major blemishes here, except for, sadly, somebody put a black switch tip on here. As far as the neck goes, it looks like there might be a small like lacquer chip right here. And they might've touched that up a little bit with some white out. And once again, back here, somebody's stand has kind of marred it a bit. Oh, nice, nice. This is actually one of the more desirable studios with the Lock and Grover tuners. The ones that are less desirable are the more Schaller in style. So this was just a fantastic find. But as soon as I ordered this, I ordered some red switch tips. And the hard part about finding them is they're normally metric in style. So I took a chance and I ordered these and unfortunately they were shipped from China. So I'm a little bit worried, but they said that they were supposed to be the correct ones, but they sell them in bulk. So it looks like uh, six of them. So here goes nothing. I sure do hope that these are right. No, they're liars. They said it was the correct dimensions and it's not. That's what you get for ordering these things on Amazon, but it looks like I might be able to just slightly fudge it on there. Oh, well, it looks a little bit doofy, but hey, at least you have some red switch tips. But cool, let's go ahead and pack some stuff up now. Starting things off here, we gotta say goodbye to the Ebony Dove. This was a real treat to have. I haven't owned a Dove in like a good, uh, I would say, three or four years. I think the last one was actually in 1994 and that was back when I still lived with my mom. So here we go. Black Dove. Check out that video if you happen to have missed it. Ultimately, I think this is just great canon that this ebony dove is also becoming a gift to a mother's son just as uh, the father of Elvis gifted him his one. And then to continue that story, Elvis then gave it away not too long after that, like four years to a good buddy. But maybe we'll review an Elvis Dove one day and we'll dive a little bit deeper into that story with some of the nitty gritty details. It's not too hard to figure out what's in this one that we have to pack up. This is the Tommy Thayer Epiphone signature guitar. Yeah, this thing is quite colorful. I really love how the dark B-roll turned out for this one. That sparkle is just went crazy on it. But this was a cool instrument. There's a lot of, you know, original Kiss fans that don't really accept Mr. Thayer, but yeah, I think he makes some pretty cool ones. And if you like this general design of a guitar, but you don't like blue, his white one is pretty much this exact same thing again but just in a white pearlescent finish, and then you get the white humbucker in the bridge pickup. And I totally forgot to have fun with the color in the review and demo. So here you go, here it is in the boxing segment. Our next one to pack up here is that 86 Melody Maker. Definitely have a new appreciation for this particular model. I had quite a few people tell me that they really enjoyed theirs. And now that I've had one, I get it. It's something about the combination of this being such a thin Les Paul that makes it super lightweight. The fact that it has a traditional ABR1 mounting system instead of the Nashville style. I mean, that's just kind of crazy to think on a 1986 like this. This is not technically a historic guitar, but for some reason they decided to do that instead of a Nashville style. And this one being the oddball that it is with the ebony fretboard, it's just such a fantastic guitar. It sold really fast on reverb and then I had a bunch of people after that looking for it. The next one to pack up here is my Gibson Les Paul SM. 
Yeah, I kind of felt bad. I got this guitar like nine months ago. I'm starting to go through those old guitars that have just kind of been so pushed back. I still want to review them. I just couldn't bring myself to list it and sell them. I need to get these videos done. I'm just gonna have to persevere and go through it because they deserve to be documented and I really want to document them. It's just time has become so limited. So this is kind of a, a freaky mix model of a whole bunch of stuff. But I'm super happy to have documented it because there is not a lot of information out there. So a lot of people are kind of on board with me with SM not really meaning solid mahogany. And apparently some guy said that his dad bought one of these brand new and they called it a studio model. I don't know if I really buy that story. I mean, if he has a little bit more solid proof, I could see like student model or something like that. But at the same time, this does not have student model specs written all over it because you got the custom binding, fancy electronics. I don't think we'll ever know. But solid mahogany sure doesn't make a lot of sense either. And honestly, just feeling this thing being a chunky 11 and a half pounds, I didn't think I was going to like it. But once I actually started playing it, I really did enjoy this guitar. So it kind of surprised me. I had to re-record my whole ending segment for this one. But one last fun little story. I was talking about how these are kind of like studio customs. This just happens to be going to somebody who bought a studio standard from me. Now, I think he's still going to prefer his studio standard because it's a lot lighter in weight. It's got that alder body. It's a little bit thinner. I mean, this is a complete boat anchor in comparison, but now he'll have the Les Paul custom binding on this one. So kind of a cool addition to his collection. So let's go ahead and get this baby all packed up and onto its new home. And hopefully, this thing can uh, settle down for a while because it's been trading hands for like the past five years constantly. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning into this boxing unboxing episode. Don't forget to visit our sponsor, Skillshare, by using the link in the description to claim your free trial. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.